Yeah, we've only been married three years and we're already out of things to talk about. <laughs> this is what yeah. you have to look forward to. Yeah. You're only in what, month three or something like that? Week three? <laughs> month two. Month two, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, no, it, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And we haven't even been, so you've been married three years. We haven't even known each other two. No, we oh, haven't wow. known each other two now. We've officially known each other two years, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't, which is that wrong. Just, yeah, you don't want to mess up that date. <laughs> I guess we got married shy of knowing each other. Yeah, that's two years. what you're thinking of. Yeah. We haven't quite known each other two years when we got married. Yeah, right, right. So yeah. it's all new to us still. In love, in love, movies, in love, in, 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 in love, in love, Danny and me. in love, in love, movies. Da -da -da. officially this is in love with movies mm. oh yeah yeah and danny what is in love with movies oh yeah it's a it's a show it's a podcast where uh me and you nick and danny That's we us. talk about love and guess what movies <laughs> uh today's topic what's today's love topic well i didn't know what it was today is love across the pond love across the pond or mm -hmm. or you know we could go with uh from britain with love depending upon how you want to uh to do it or what's that one movie that i hate sorry Love actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. It's essentially a national treasure over there. Um, I, I would say so, but I would also say it hasn't aged very well. I think it definitely hasn't aged very well. Yeah. There are there are people that in that movie that are supposed to be held up as heroes, and I'm like disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah disgusting just think behavior. about our, our podcast episode of that around Christmas time. <laughs> um, you guys, then, you, you, your your podcast and Love Actually um, both harness the comma very well. <laughs> We're not talking about any movie with a comma today. Nick, what movie are we talking about? We're talking about Groundhog Day. Which has an apostrophe, right? <laughs> no, it's nope. just ground <laughs> Groundhog Day. No, it is Groundhog Day. Wel welcome to the podcast. English I think, language. I think, <laughs> I think every, every, time we, every time we reference the movie, you have to say it in a slightly different way with the grammatical like, edge. You have to go like, Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Groundhog's Day. <laughs> Groundhog Day. <laughs> plural or not plural? Groundhog's Day. No, just the one groundhog, yeah. It's only one of them. Yeah, the irony the one. irony of it being repetitive, though, is that it's only a singular. But he owns the gr the day. Like, mm -hmm. Never mind. You're getting way distracted. You, she had, she, we had a disagreement over our last <laughs> episode's introduction and how I talked over her. So we had this whole planned out way that we were going to do it. And I love that the real life of us is just turning into <laughs> random vamping. No, I, I do think Danny has a point there, though, because it could technically be a possessive apostrophe. Thank you. The day belongs right, to the groundhog's ground day. Though. It's his day, yeah. you know? Right. All right. So <laughs> that's our topic in our, our, our movie. Who are our guests? Why don't you introduce the <laughs> guests while I answer this grammatical important question from IMDb? Um, we have Anna and Andy Merriweather. Anna, is your last name Merriweather? Did you change your last name? Yes, I did. It is now. Awesome. We got the double A Merriweathers. And do you all want to introduce yourselves? Tell us a little bit about you and how Nick found you and forced you to be on our podcast. Yeah. So for Anna, you start. How did Nick find you? In that? I was not involved in any of this no, whatsoever until now. Completely, so. completely dragged along. Um, uh, I um, host a show called Settle the School. She's there um, mm -hmm. with uh, with Matt Nost, um, which is essentially a name that tune, but with movie scores and soundtracks. And um, and Nick was a guest uh, about a month and a bit ago, month and a half, something like that. And um, yeah, we got on really well on the show, um, despite me not not being engaged. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we got chatting and found out he did this, and I tuned in, really enjoyed the episodes, and then um, convinced Anna to to come on with me. I also <laughs> listen slash watch your podcast, Andy, and you are extremely talented. And Matt came up with, I don't know if you both came up with it together, a very fun concept, because I love guessing games and I love music, and then the harder part for me is I don't know a lot of movie music. So it's you did a really good job when you were on it. I got but we close. always listen to it together. And you know what? When we're not recording, I'm better than you. <laughs> when you're on it, you were doing well, but I did, I usually do better than you. It's true. When we're listening to episodes, she often gets the, the answers sooner than I do. Matt's like way too nice. I think he's jilted from uh, 
how it's serious right. things have gotten over on Schmo down. He's like, yeah, I don't exactly. want any of the, the <laughs> I don't want anybody throwing challenges, nobody taking anything too seriously. No, exactly. Yeah, we do we do have those discussions. It's like, you know, as much as we we share a lot of the competitors and we share, you know, a fair bit of the fan base, it's kind of anti schmodown in terms of feel. We want people to not feel like they're on the schmodown. And that's why people like Viviani come back on a lot and and Draco and stuff. It's because it is a bit of a break for them. Anyway, yeah. Well, in the interest of making sure we do move along and get somewhat to a little bit more of our topic, not that we yeah. officially do so, I do have a couple of questions. Ooh. Okay. Nick always comes prepared and I don't. She's improviser. She wings it. This is how, you know, these things work. Um, I, on the other hand, like, am a professor and therefore I have to be ready for them. <laughs> I'm like planning what I want to say and then anticipating questions and the follow ups and the answers to those questions. But anyway, so one of the things I wanted to kind of just talk about briefly, and maybe we can only take 10 minutes or whatever or less. Uh, I'm curious if there's anything that's different about courtship, love, um, you know, relationships, things that you all have noted. And maybe the best way to start that is if you could give us just a, a two minute sort of summary of your entire love story for yourselves. So wow, and we're actually timing you. So at two minutes, you have to stop talking. Go. Yeah, can you give us a 10 second one? Um, <laughs> I this is interesting, because uh, I, I explained our the question you've asked, I explained it in my groom speech did I not? Yeah, I basically did yeah. explain it. Oh, um, so for context, I convinced Anna to do a joint bride and groom speech for our wedding, which we've just put as an un, as a like an unlinked what do we call it unlisted uh, link on YouTube, so people are, like a family can watch it. But it's an hour and fifteen. Our speech was long. Wow. And, Very um, self-indulgent. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we told people like buckle in. This is going to be lengthy, <laughs> but um, but I wanted to treat my groom speech that kind of set up our longer speech uh, i just wanted five minutes and i just going to be like a a bit of stand-up material and essentially um essentially I want... he gathered a load of stuff about me over the two years together to rip into me about on, on the green speech no not really no not really it wasn't i didn't tear into you at all i wanted the, i wanted to just discuss at our wedding online dating because i've never heard anybody discuss it before at a wedding in a speech and so many people the ratio of people that met online to um weddings must be higher than the people that are admitting it i i believe that people kind of move away from it and and make up that they met in a bar or something because they're embarrassed about it. and i wanted to face it head on and talk to people in a room most of whom are in love already what it's like going online dating in your 30s and so um, I'll, I'll do a really quick version of that. So I'll take my five minutes and condense it to two just for you guys. Um, You've already had a minute. Yeah, well, that was <laughs> context. I said, I said context. The time has stopped. You, you say context, time has stopped, and then the, they go again. He asked for a pause. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A challenge. Um, so basically, um, uh, Anna and I both had um, love lives that uh, – came to a crumbling halt and all this kind of stuff. And we, we basically, we have a history that we know about each other. And I think that's the good thing about when you start dating someone um, later in life is that you both come in with baggage. So you just like open up the baggage and show, show your other half uh, rather than being like, oh, I didn't know you dated that girl, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what happens is we were on Bumble and uh, the way I described it in my speech, I actually had Google Maps as a, as a PowerPoint slide. <laughs> And essentially, you you decide. I don't know if you guys have done online dating before. Whether you maybe the longer create... you run the story, the more I love you. By the way, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <laughs> Amazing it's fine. way to approach this. So, uh, on online dating, you have to decide how um, far from your body is the love of your life in miles. And so, I decided, you know, in my thirties, I have to like create a hell of a pool, you know, hell of a pool to swim around in. And so, I did thirty miles. Um, and the joke I said in my wedding was that I needed to get out of my existing dating pool. So let's do 22, 30 miles and create this kind of like donut of dating. <laughs> and, um, and basically I showed on the map where I was and where 30 miles was in this like perfect circumference that I was going to be dating in. And then Anna is sat two miles outside of that circle. And so we never meet just wouldn't ever have happened. 
And Anna's circumference was uh, essentially her apartment block. <laughs> <laughs> she's like the love of my life love is gonna, love yeah the love of my life is with the people i could literally bump into on the corner <laughs> exactly yeah 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 what, you know what height do you want to date what what eye color and she's like i don't care you know are they near my kitchen <laughs> <laughs> and so um but luckily do you want to take it from here you know this bit so i'm i'm a primary school teacher and um, I'd taken my class, my year group at the time, to a residential in um, a place in the UK called Swindon, um, which is where Andy grew up. And just by chance, on one night, I was I put all the kids to bed and I was sat on my phone, bored, and, you know, everyone's asleep. And, and that's, so, that's so much justification for you just saying, I open Bumble. <laughs> like people aren't, that's, 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 I'm a very responsible teacher and no, I have it. my phone out when the children you're are like, you're, like this. you're like going you're like night to me <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get there for context again. Um, and then um, Andy's at his parents and that's like a couple of miles from the um, like activity centre I'd taken the children to Yeah. and so just by this freak chance like he was only staying at his parents one night just this freak chance we we ha and we have to open Bumble yeah. and both have to start swiping at exactly the right time or we never ever meet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, um, it's crazy. It's uh, existentially, it's so freaky. We talked about mm -hmm. that early on, didn't we? That as you know, we can make each other so happy and then think, God, imagine I wasn't online that day or my battery mm -hmm. had died or, you know, you never ever meet. So that's of it's kind of crazy. And so many different probabilities and you start thinking about Okay, no, don't start. <laughs> He's gonna start. That's awesome and hilarious, and I love that. It's funny because Nick and I did. I s swiped past him on Tinder, and I said, "She said no." no. no <laughs> so we actually did like cross paths online, and I did. I wasn't into that. Yeah, we figured that out. Some point. <laughs> some point in our first year, I think of of dating, we we put two and two together because we definitely we met at work, and therefore we were would have been around some of the same circles what are you looking for my phone oh my mom's calling me <laughs> tell barb to the barb. Room. we're busy um yeah so we, we realized later on that we definitely like because we shared each other's like in uh tinders at some point when we kind of like started to take ourselves off of them we were like oh by the way this is what mine looks like you know kind of thing and then it was in seeing some of the pictures that were like and that looks really familiar <laughs> and then she put two and two together because oh. there was one Nick was particular. wearing like a cowboy hat and he was like, like it's just the worst picture I've ever she seen. She was so turned off it's by it. Very me. embarrassing. <laughs> and so right, she's that's left. But you you must have made some impression. I mean, I was gonna I was gonna say you must have made some impression, and then I heard about the cowboy hat, and now I don't need to <laughs> comment. <laughs> oh, you're the cowboy hat guy. I've told all my friends about you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I screenshot it and I was like, look at this weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but that's that's really pretty amazing that's a that's a great story i i've thought about that um you know if you're kind of secreting ink for your entire life we've spoken about this kind of theory that you know would you at the end of your life look at a, you know your ink block and realize that your paths crossed so many times before you met and stuff like that mm -hmm. um i think the interesting thing now is and that's because we predate um you know, growing up, we would have predated kind of geolocations and stuff like that. But the interesting thing now is there will there will be people getting together in their thirties in thirty years time mm -hmm. that they could have gone. Oh, look, we checked in at this re at this restaurant together, but we weren't together. And they'll yeah. be they have the kind of digital ink block. Well, we have a, a like very small example of just that. step all over that analogy. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we realised that we were like one day out of being the same place doing a show together. That's right. The in the heights. In the I was at I, the final. Night I went to the penultimate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah close. That was close. I do remember from your show that both of you connected on in the heights, and I, there was a small part of me that wondered if you would pick that for oh, for this gosh. episode. I, I'm Hamilton. assuming you've watched it? it, right? Did we it, it, was, it was Hamilton that we we really connected on. I think you. I had Hamilton listed because I had a uh, at the time I had like a, a online show about Hamilton where I play. Hamilton covers mixed in with like Michael Jackson or Disney and stuff. And um, so I had Hamilton like at the forefront of my online profile. Um, Hamilton t-shirt, cowboy hat, little tip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and 
and you that was the first thing you asked me was what's your favorite Hamilton lyric I think uh-huh. and what and, is uh, it I came back and said um I don't know if it was but I had to play ball right so I I, I came back and said um <laughs> that it was the I want to um sit under my own vine and fig tree a moment alone in the shade Mm-hmm. At home in this nation we've made, I thought it's, it's really beautiful. definitely not his favorite lyric, by the way. No, I never, <laughs> no, I never go. I to love it. the deep eye roll that happened, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, but so yeah, it was Hamilton that like I was our first conversation, but then very quickly we started talking about different musicals that we liked and yeah, musicals. Yeah, yeah. that I think that held me. I think it was like not to be too um, stereotypical, but I think my love of musicals really held me against the grain in terms of um other guys on bumble or whatever i think there's a very yeah i mean masculine approach to online dating and, like, oh yeah yeah and i wasn't like that, that yeah. yeah totally because andy's got such a diverse interest like he he loves football he you know movies musicals there's so many different things that he's into that you, you're it's a bit a of a chameleon thing. in that way aren't you like oh yeah he can like turn a conversation to sort of whoever he's speaking to and have something to say about it which is quite enviable I think but um yeah so it was musicals very much that kind of just like got us chatting yeah it was and interestingly Groundhog Day obviously there's a Tim Minchin um which I'm sure we'll talk about later Tim Minchin wrote a musical version of Groundhog Day yeah and it was a complete miss from me and I love musicals like absolutely all I listen to love musicals and um I'd completely missed it. I didn't even know it existed. So that was something that Andy kind of introduced me to. Yeah, it, was, cool. yeah it, it definitely. Anna, Anna, you know, in terms of movie trivia, um, it's it's my bag. You're you know part of it, but in musicals, Anna, Anna's seen way more than me. Knows way more than me. Um, but yeah, Groundhog Day only ran for uh, two weeks in the UK. I saw it opening night. And then it moved to Broadway. They moved the entire cast and crew to Broadway. And I went over there and watched it as well. And um, so that is like a weird crossover, isn't it? Between like my passion and your passion. Yeah. And I kind of had this, you know, exciting. Oh, I didn't even know a, a musical of Groundhog Day existed. Yeah. And then since then, we've duetted the songs together. We have recordings of us singing the songs. Oh, um, yeah. so that's pretty cool. But I have another question. OK, I didn't write no. anything down, but I got all the Go questions. For it. <laughs> so you've known each other for two years. What was the date and year when you met? <laughs> And how long of that was spent in quarantine? Good question. Um, so we met in person on the 29th of June, 2019, right? Mm-hmm. Check it out, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we went into, so essentially we met and then basically Andy never left. So we just kind of. <laughs> exactly. Like, that was it. That was kind of anniversary. Too many movies. That was it. <laughs> the, uh, it, it would, the, the distance between our, um abodes was uh an hour so and you know a round trip would be two hours length of a movie just stay put yeah so he just moved in essentially and had tenants in his house and, and left this ticking over for a year or so didn't you moved into my flat and then we went into lockdown in march 2020 yeah. and it's all been a blur since basically exactly. <laughs> i snuck a toothbrush in bristle by bristle <laughs> I've never said bristle by bristle before, and now I love it. <laughs> if I'm ever dating again, that will be my profile. Andy Merriweather, bristle ever by I'm bristle. Again. Right, well, I'm already planning. Think about it now. What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So you all like you survived quarantine because you basically started it when you didn't have to. You quarantined together immediately. <laughs> basically, yeah. I actually think we. I feel like we've had this conversation quite recently that. Um, because we haven't been together very long actually lockdown in a funny sort of way really solidified our relationship we just had to spend loads of time together and mm. realized that actually yeah i'd pick him if i'm gonna choose anyone to kind of spend all day every day being bored with he's all right i'll keep him yeah i don't i don't like being bored and i i almost find it offensive yeah he's people really get not bored. Good at being bored. so <laughs> i think there's too much to learn there's too many things that are exciting there's you know there's there's an awful lot um in access mm. so i i don't like being bored and that's i guess that's good for a lockdown scenario so you can't you can't really be bored when it's like always firing 
So, um, yeah, that, that worked out, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, so. It's, I love how you all say that as if it was just this foregone conclusion, but you don't believe, Andy, in any kind of destiny or anything, because I know a lot of people that if they were locked into <laughs> that scenario, it would not result in them being like, oh, this is definitely the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. In fact, I am very solid in our relationship, but uh -oh. the pandemic has probably <laughs> been the most difficult time for us. I really sort of just how it affects each of us. Like me, I'm almost happy to to just never go out or see any other human being besides my wife. That I, like I, if that was my existence, I might occasionally be sad, but I'd figure it out. <laughs> Um, she, on the other hand, like the idea of not being able to see, especially family, but even friends, like, I mean, the other day, my friends were like, well, why is she not just hanging out at home alone? Cause I would go to play poker and you basically like, were desperate to find someone to go hang out with so that you weren't just in the house alone. Cause that is like recipe for misery for her. <laughs> um, so we had a solid relationship, luckily going into pandemic. I'm not sure if it had hey! been that early in our relationship. <laughs> If but I think our personalities, sport. although we're very, very different as people in lots of ways, I think I, we're actually both quite good on our own and, and being kind of, I'm not a social butterfly at all. I've got a select few close friends, but I'm not, I've never been a party girl sort of thing, really. Um, and I think you're probably similar in that way, aren't you? Like, you like your movies, you've got your friends, but you're not like needing Mm, yeah. um we should probably go ahead and move along i don't I, i'm enjoying this conversation a great deal and genuinely feel like i could speak yeah, to you yeah. both for hours but when are you guys press and record let's go <laughs> <laughs> um we do have another segment to cover okay all right before we move on to the the movie well so. you should ask is there any last any final words she's right that you want to say about your love story that we didn't really talk about yeah your well, life, we talked your about love. Your, your intro, but you know, just dating in general, things like that. The 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 dating married, thing we help. Very new marriage. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. So, but dating is, you know, I guess if we're doing a kind of a, a yin and yang, versus you know America versus. Yeah. We don't really know what the dating world is like over there, but I think. Um, based on tv shows and stuff like that that there's i think it's a lot more relaxed and i think it's a lot more um the the steps aren't as i think they're more sort of glued together i think it's one smooth courtship rather than what, here or there? over here right. because i think based on what we've seen and it might be just kind of hollywoodized but it feels like there's a kind of we're seeing At each other stage. then we're going steady Next and then and then mm -hmm. the, the L word seems like really important over in America, whereas yeah. um, here it's, I think it's a little looser. I think there's also something to be said about um, the difference in how we've kind of dated and ended up where we are now compared to if we'd have met when we were a lot younger as well. I think like what Andy said earlier about the fact that we'd had a love like, you know, relationships loves that had not worked out and been heartbreaking all those kind of things mm -hmm. I think we both well I certainly came into our relationship actually just quite jaded with the whole thing I was like I know I want to settle down I want to meet someone to kind of share my life with I want to have a family all those sorts of things I just got to the point where I was a bit over it and so I think that just puts a very different spin on how you enter into a relationship and 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 how you tackle it and I think for us I actually didn't take Andy very seriously originally. I was kind of like, he's probably just another expletive from the internet that I just, <laughs> you know, he's going to move on in a few weeks or whatever. So I kind of didn't give him his due, I guess, in lots of ways. Um, I was just like, we'll see how it goes. But it's gone wrong so many times up to mm. now. Um, but Andy being the personality that he is, he's so all in and like such a package, aren't you? Love? Like, just like so all feeling and all being that you know i couldn't almost help but be like oh bloody hell actually okay like he is he is for real here and then like once that had kind of penny had dropped we just got swept into this kind of amazing romance that is very much based on friendship actually we're like yeah. we love spending time together we're really good friends and then yeah i think just... your mum convinced you she like your mum was like she'll watch this now and she'll <laughs> 
but I think when you weren't taking it seriously, your mum was like, Anna, he's, he's all in. He's Come on. Yeah. putting in a lot of effort in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think I think maybe part of it was me sort of subconsciously protecting my own my own heart and not wanting to get hurt. And yeah, I don't know. But then once I'd kind of jumped that hurdle, we were we were all in, and, and it really has been just this. I mean, obviously, like life is hard and and things are challenging, and we're not perfect, and we argue and all those sorts of things. But like, it's been pretty pretty cool since. I yeah, think. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. My goal is to just be one of those couples that everyone's envious. So we're doing all right. <laughs> Yeah. no it's nice it's, it is nice and uh but he does love an argument so i like an argument it gets my, it gets me going yeah and oh, i don't love I like an it. argument so. okay like i will i'll i'll take the That's other good. opinion just to just to get that going yeah yeah you will. yeah no problem but yeah um so yeah to answer your question absolutely no final words so <laughs> <laughs> we just drag on and on i have a bit of you then i just waffled yeah sorry so the so. next segment I'm, this is just actually andy i wanted to give you how it feels for when the hosts are having a conversation <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. which context to provide. Yeah, that's funny, yeah. <laughs> i kind of like c <laughs> <laughs> people Listen, hate that of, uh, up of ours movie lovers if you haven't listened to uh settle the score you should go listen to that and you'll understand what that joke is but yeah, what yeah. in we are in reality doing over here is danny is looking at our next segment that we're going to have called closer through science so hmm. ooh, you're gonna are you gonna tell us what closer no, through Nick, science tell is? us what closer through okay. science is closer through <laughs> science is uh a where we ask a series of questions and these are actually genuinely a scientific study uh by uh, I'm always forgetting the author's name, Aaron and uh, Aaron at all 1997. This is a real social psychology study where they basically discovered, Hey, if you take two strangers and you make them answer these questions while staring each other in the eyes, they will actually genuinely feel closer to that person by the end of the conversation. So interesting. Wait, his name's guess. Aaron, Aaron. At yeah, all. yeah. So him and others. No. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What a cop out. <laughs> Like that was like Dave, Dave was there going, Can I have my name on it? And he's like, I'll just put Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> All and right. So on. the next question on the list. So you both have to answer. Mm -hmm. How close whilst, whilst looking each other in the eyes. <laughs> whilst looking us in the eyes. Oh, I see. Right. And I want you to stare directly into our eyes on the camera. Okay. I'm looking okay. at baby yoda instead of your eyes okay how <laughs> close and warm is your family and do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's there's not a short answer to that question is there surely um, <laughs> i know these are i mean these are we're deep. getting into the deeper ones this okay let's do it let's do eye contact 30. i my my family are definitely warm i will give an example um at so i have a huge huge family my mum is one of 14. Holy um, crap. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Um, Are you Catholic? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Um, so I, I've i been to... Um, well, even by, by the time I had kind of cognitive reasoning, I've been to so many weddings and funerals that it kind of... The whole idea of it all... Um, it, it it lost a lot of meaning especially funerals which in in ireland anyway are kind of celebrations that's that they're, they're they're treated a lot more sorrowful here in the uk but in in ireland um where my family are from they're very celebratory and i remember being at my granddad's funeral and my granddad was a uh, um an irish champion weightlifter and oh uh tenor singer and one of these you know multitude people i guess he's got a lot of passions like i do um and uh, there were a lot of people at his funeral and the party afterwards um that we had in in celebration of him someone was leaving um at, towards the end of the party or whatever maybe not but they were leaving and as they left they were like oh can we come to the next family party <laughs> and then realized what they'd said and was like oh my god i'm so sorry completely <laughs> forgot it was a funeral <laughs> Whereas we were like, what you mean when like, <laughs> you know, Uncle Bob pops his car or whatever. Like, yes, you're the next oldest person in the room. Yeah, 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 exactly. But 
it was i think that kind of anecdote has has gone down as legend because that's exactly right it's exactly what my family look for um past girlfriends i've had um hi if you're watching um they tend to want to it's it's kind of evident isn't well, it it's Does your it, mum isn't it it's, yeah my mum is yeah. very she's she's the arms around the world type uh -huh. and they feel uh, very welcome and i've i've joked about it but when i've broken up with girls before um and they start to cry <laughs> i'm sat there going i know this isn't about me <laughs> i know you it's because it's because i'm breaking you my mum's now breaking up with you. <laughs> so yes very warm family very welcoming everyone wants to be a part of the norris family it really is like that that's my family name on my mum's side and uh super super happy childhood i was a happy baby anyway as far as i remember or being told mm -hmm. so yeah super happy um what were you nightmare what <laughs> your family no i love them they're great um my <laughs> very diff it's really funny actually because we have i think although sort of you were brought up in a religious household and i wasn't I think our families actually have quite similar sort of core values and oh, yeah. yeah very much kind of yeah just just share those core values of sure. sort of being kind and, and good people and those sorts of things um, our, our mums our mums get on very yeah, well they've just booked good. a theatre show to go together yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. they go for afternoon tea together and stuff. yeah they're really, so yeah. british <laughs> it's lovely they get on really well afternoon tea together yeah that is yeah. very british <laughs> <laughs> Um, but my family was very different in a lot of ways from Andy's in that neither of my parents have siblings. So it was literally me, my mum, my dad, my sister and my granny, my mum's mum. We lived together in a house and that was us. You know, we have my dad has we have sort of family that we saw once or twice a year, um, kind of Christmas and those sorts of things. But it was really just us. Um, and, you know, I was very loved and felt very safe and happy and yeah, had a brilliant childhood. My sister, I sort of always say, is my first and best friend. You know, we're super close. She uh, deserves a medal because I was just so demanding and a nightmare little sister. But she, yeah, we were just best friends and, you know, have been sort of ever since. Um, didn't really need mu much more than that, if, if that makes sense. I think that's probably why I'm not kind of a big showy personality who needs lots of people around me because it was just us when I was little. Um, and yeah, and now my family's different in that I lost my dad when I was 21, 21. Um, and that left kind of a big hole in a very small family unit. And it took us quite a long time to kind of find our way. But my mum's sort of remarried and she's got this big, we've got, we call it our patchwork family. Um, my mum's um, husband has got five children who, you know, three of them are kind of younger and then two similar age to me and my sister. And um, yeah, we're just this big patchwork family, all different types of people. And it's, it's brilliant. It's kind of lovely and, and very different to how we grew up, but equally great. So yeah, I've always just felt very loved, I suppose. That's the... Still awesomely mm -hmm. warm. That's awesome. That yeah. is great. That's also, very lovely. I could just listen to you guys talk because I like your accent. It's the accent. <laughs> that was coming. Mm -hmm. it's just you've, got, you've got, um, Anna's got, we, we have this thing where basically if anna says one of the um one of the posher words the posher versions of the words that i would use because i'm from a more common no it's not that it's, it's um what's the word um like location yeah um there's a word for it like regional dialect yes thank you regional uh, dialect like you say you're from wiltshire so mm -hmm. you say sounds differently i'm from yeah, I'll London, say so. keep off the grass and you say keep, keep off the, the grass. grass. Yeah. Yeah. I say the R sound like raspberry or grass or yeah. bath. Yeah. Um so and he always takes the every time she says something like, um, can you get me a glass of water? I'm like, well, and, and some raspberries, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> she sounds posh to me. Is, um, <laughs> and I'd rather have some grey poopal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. It'll be exactly. Offensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was perfect. That was perfect. I, I, I looked at Anna thinking, is that is deeper than you normally sound? Oh, no. It's <laughs> okay, well, we, we'll take a quick break, uh, listeners, and then we will come back listening to what movie, Mary Weathers? Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Apostrophe. Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not gonna I, do it. I did Google it. It was only one. I'm in love with movies. Da da da. And we're back. Welcome back, movie lovers, to In Love with Movies. And now we are going to get to discuss uh, the actual movie uh, that we are reviewing today Groundhog Day. Groundhog's and, Day. No, we, we all know <laughs> this. It's only one groundhog. There's not so, more. So, Nick, of them. tell us about this movie. <laughs> all right. So, just basics of the movie. This is a 1993, for those of you who don't know, uh, starring Bill Murray. It's got Harold Ramis directed it. A little bit of a fun fact for some people who may not know this. This movie is supposedly the reason that their friendship basically broke up. Uh, Harold Ramis and, and Bill Murray. I don't know how much we'll get to talk about that. Uh, but also, uh, Andy McDowell and people may not know this name, Chris Elliott. But if anybody is a fan of Schitt's Creek, it is Roland Shit. And so uh, another face earlier on in the career. Uh, that you you might not have known as well as as well as many others but uh, those are the kind of the main players so and another fun fact that we learned from my uncle when we were telling him we were going to watch the movie is that a lot of it was filmed in uh woodstock, woodstock. illinois hmm, that's right. away from see... where we live right now oh no way yeah you can see it on the store names yeah it said like woodstock jewelers and stuff like that that's right yeah, yeah. and that that whole square is apparently exactly as it seems in the movie right. you, you can see it on google maps at least we <laughs> you google mapped it Great. I google mapped it all right so um mary weathers tell us your love story with this movie which love story is not like your love what is love story it's <laughs> the first time you, you the first time you ever saw the movie yeah, okay. Um, That's kind of why we picked this movie, right? It's why we picked this yeah, movie. Why we picked it, yeah. I guess it goes yeah. along with your love story. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so... Oh, it was about... It was only a few days after we met, I guess. Mm -hmm. it? Um, Anna's local cinema, which is the same cinema chain that we have the unlimited card for, but this is near where she used to live. Um, so her local were doing a double feature of Groundhog Day, so this is only two years ago, and Jaws. And oh. both movies are in my top five all time. Oh. Wow. And so I was like, you know, are you up for seeing these Here's two? Here's where the education starts. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and I was like, are you up for seeing either one of these movies? Like, I, you know, I tried to see Jaws whenever it's in the cinemas anyway. And, um, and we went for it. And we, yeah, we basically saw Groundhog Day, then had some dinner and then went to see Jaws back to back. And so it was either one of those two films were going to be our discussion point for today. Mm -hmm. um, and Jaws we've now seen again and again. And Groundhog Day we've revisited just for this. But you, you'd never seen either film before. No. So, wow. yeah, essentially we picked it because it's our first film together, so it kind of sparked everything. Um, but also, uh, I guess... It has a lot of interesting themes regarding, um, you know, uh, mm. yeah, well, um, selflessness in regard to, uh, like, sacrificial selflessness in order to uh, obtain love. Yeah. And then there's, um, with us spending the majority of our love life in lockdown and having that kind of same routine, being stuck in the same four walls over and over again. So Groundhog Day has that about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's essentially the reason we picked it. I have a somewhat distinct memory of this movie being Groundhog Day, the first movie, the first time I ever understood the concept of suicide. Mm. Like there's obviously that whole montage where he's basically doing that several times. Mm -hmm. And the one that stood out to me, because it was so cliche, I know at the time was the whole toaster oven in the bathtub. Yeah. And I have like a va more vague memory of actually asking like, what's happening? Why is he throwing? Like I did not understand because obviously they don't, show anything gruesome or anything like that mm. and i didn't understand it my parents had to explain to me uh like he is you know killing himself that it will electrocute and you know his life will end mm. and like that was because i watched this movie i don't know when it went if it was 93 i probably watched it sometime 94 95 so i would have been you know 10 at the most yeah um it's pretty early to <laughs> yeah. understand the concept of suicide but anyway. yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense because you kind of you kind of grow up knowing that you shouldn't put your fingers in the plug sockets and things like that, but mm -hmm. no one ever goes to don't take the toaster to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> Not a thing. that's true. Um, and um, I had never seen this movie either, okay, <laughs> so this cool, was my yeah. first time seeing this movie. But I 
being in the comedy world. Like this is a staple, something that's referred to constantly. I mean, it's Bill Murray and Harold Ramis and Harold Ramis is a Chicago guy. So and Ser I mean, second city has second the city Harold Ramis Bill film school. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So anyways, I'm very glad I finally watched it. It wasn't one where I was like, <laughs> no, I don't want to see it. It was just like, that was never my first pick. I'd go back to Legally Blonde 500 times before I would watch this, but I'm glad that we watched it. <laughs> okay, cool. And what what's it like, Danny, watching it with, um, I mean, it's similar for you, but yeah. um, it seems like the world is changing all the time, but what's it like watching it with sort of 2021 eyes? Because it has aged a little as comedies tend to do. Yeah. You know, it wasn't as, uh, the comedy was not as old as, a lot of even like watching friends you're like oh that's sexist mm -hmm. or that's homophobic and like right, right. that's only like 10 years well, I, 20 years I, I, you said they're 20 years yeah movies, but. i think interestingly chris elliott was in there's something about mary as well right and yeah. um has all the hives and uh i can't watch there's something about mary now i find that very very dated in yeah. terms of um comedy style i think groundhog day i think the that whole crew of you know the ghostbusters um crew and like that old snl group Mm -hmm. They really did find the kind of classic window. I think the same with like trains, planes, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's just it. It is timeless. I didn't think comedy could be timeless properly. I think it, comedy evolves, especially movie genre comedy evolves way faster than drama. I think drama can last a lot longer. Horror lasts a lot longer, but comedy really finds finds itself dated a few years out. I mean, American Pie is so dated, but this yeah. film. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it just for whatever reason. But do you think that's because it's a bit of a well, it's kind of a such an arc, like a personal journey for him. It's almost like a commentary on all of those sort of things that we might find challenging now. You know, like the way he treats some of the women and things like that. Like it, it's almost it's it's a comment. It's not that's, mm -hmm. it's happening in the movie, but it's a commentary on on yeah, why like that. He's not like the cool guy yeah, hitting on his exactly. girls. Yeah, exactly. He's supposed to be an asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, and exactly. it's challenging even like in the 90s. Some like it hot are doing something that holds up today, even though it is two guys dressed as girls. It doesn't hold up as well as something made 60 years later in white checks. And it's because they know they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. in, the characters know they're doing something wrong and they address it that way. Mm -hmm. And they get offended when men treat them differently. And so mm -hmm. they're, they're holding a mirror up more. Yeah. yeah, and there is a little bit of that in Groundhog Day. There's just, I think, the part of it that I think, if I was watching it for the first time, there's a there's a, a, so much manipulation of even Rita. Like, his yeah. final day with Rita and falling in love with her mm -hmm. still has so much to it. And um, I have I have an incredible, um, lifelong built-up rant about, about Groundhog Day that I, Anna's heard and some other people have heard. No one seems to care, but we're now we're talking about it on a podcast. But um, I'll, I'll touch on it right now. And, and this is why Phil's last day wasn't perfect. Has to be, right? So the idea is that um, um, Phil Connors, um, he rejects Rita. He bookends the movie by rejecting Rita. He, he first of all rejects her for going out for dinner with her, her and Larry that night at the start of the movie. Sure. Um, he ends the movie in a completely different way. Um, and I said to Anna earlier, one of the more realistic movie arcs or character arcs, because um, normally they take place over a movie length. Um, this character, depending on how you feel about it, took place over, you know, 50 years his character it yeah. took that long and he got worse in the meantime yeah um but uh when he in his final day when he says R rita's so impressed by his um his kind of eulogizing speech of the groundhog day that she off that she asks him out for coffee basically asking him on a date and it's everything that he's wanted and he's worked so hard in trying to figure her out and find out what she likes and be the perfect guy and now she's asking him on a date right at the top of the day mm. And he says, no, I've got some errands to run. And he basically spends the day being the perfect guy and the townspeople love him and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, this is an aside, but I do not know how he got physical WrestleMania tickets 
in a in a situation that he's in. There's no possible way he got physical WrestleMania ticket. For Michael Shannon, by the way. Michael Shannon plays Fred. Um, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, but he spends the day being a perfect guy. And also what's interesting is in the musical, and because I've seen the musical a few times, um, I know the differences. And one of the differences is um, she doesn't say that line. In the musical, she says, he's good, isn't he? Rita says, yeah. And she goes, that's my piano. Mm. And I think it's because they know. It doesn't make sense that she yeah. knows who he is. <laughs> that yeah. gave me pause, too, when they when she said that. I was like, that, like you said, it's weird that she'd be that proud if it's, it's just one day of him playing. Yeah, yeah or, exactly. like, or if nothing else, she'd be like, you know, you wouldn't be that impressed by it. Now, I do think he could have done a lesson. Because the timing, I think it could happen. Oh, you know, there's, I, I just the time, the timing could, like could yeah, it could happen. The timing could happen, but then he definitely has to rob the bank, and I don't think that's you, the the best day to end on. Okay, if he fine. if he robs the bank, yeah, and also he did he does buy all the insurance off of um off of Ned Ryerson, yeah. which makes me think he did rob the bank, and I don't think then he's having a beautiful next day with Rita if he did that. Uh oh, Ooh, you've got me there in terms of I don't know about the Ned Ryerson and the lots of, but I, I guess maybe my same argument could still hold here. If you eventually got to the point where you knew you weren't, uh, you know, you, you just assumed you were never going to see tomorrow. Mm. He's a rich enough guy that he probably could take enough money out of the bank to just mm. have be his own money if he wanted to go have the lesson. That's and true. Similarly, like probably make Ned's day for that one day saying, yeah, I'll sign on the dotted line that I owe yeah. you this mm. amount of money in life insurance because you're just presuming to yourself like. I don't actually. So what would be more interesting is he wakes up the next day <laughs> with Rita and he has all these bills that he now has to pay yeah, and exactly, get robbed yeah. the bank because he was exactly. being an altruistic person. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, his 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 overall living costs will be so diminished by living in punk's <laughs> That's very but, true. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think going back to the comedy, Danny, I think some of the some of the things that hold up and even... There's some things that I, you know, I would have watched this film when I was seven for the first time, probably. Um, and then I've watched it, you know, so frequently since. But one of the lines that gets me now, and it's one of those things where as a kid, you don't really understand the what's really being said. And one of the things I love is how they are showing you that he hates this town so much is when the cop says to him, um, you can go back to Punxsutawney or you can go ahead and freeze to death. And Phil goes, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I think that's brilliant. I think that's so good. Like he really is, or you know, in a jokey way, considering is it better to die or go back to this hellhole? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good setup. And that, you know, he, sh he shows a lot of jealousy that I didn't catch before. You know, um, like I said to Anna uh, earlier when we were watching it, he's not, he's not the most famous Phil in town. He's not right. the most famous weatherman in town, and he's not the most famous weatherman named Phil in town. <laughs> and it must hurt. That must hurt him for the type of guy that he is. I was going to that... ask if, like, I wrote down when they first said his name was Phil. Uh, I was like, is he named, is Punxsutawney Phil named after the character? But then I realized it's the other way around, that his name just happens to be Phil. And that's the mm -hmm. same. But it's definitely yeah, bruising yeah. his ego. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I never exactly, even yeah. thought about that. You know, I agree that, like, Bill Murray, he's not my favorite comedian. I think he's he's a he's a pain in the butt. But I think that he's brilliant in this movie because, like you said, Anna, it it's not dated because he's genuinely a jerk. Like it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be um like what is it irreverent or like there's subtle sexism or whatever. It's he's just subtle. a bad dude, and the yeah. movie's like this is not cool. But he mm -hmm. plays it so well. The line that made me chuckle so much was when he said, he's on the phone. He's like, what if there is no tomorrow? There wasn't one today. <laughs> yeah, that's a, great, that's a great line. That's a great line. Oh, man. And the, and the uh, a few things Anna said, because Anna knows the musical so well now from the soundtrack. Um, there were scenes in the movie that I guess you forgot how short they were. And there are whole songs based on that one moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some really, really funny, lengthy songs that are just a snapshot in the movie. And it's mm -hmm. really interesting to see how they, what they, what they, they extended, yeah, yeah, what they pulled apart. And yeah, it's, it, that kind of stuff is very interesting. Um, I, I highly recommend the soundtrack if you guys. Um, yeah, we should play it. It's really cool. 
I similarly yeah. was not aware that it was a thing, and so now I'm I'm desperately wanting. Oh, it's so Honestly, good! It's, like it's beautiful. I think the thing that because I'd obviously seen the movie, we went to cinema to see it before I listened to the soundtrack or kind of had any understanding of the fact that there was a, a musical. Um, I loved Tim Minchin, so I, as soon as Andy said it, I was like, was going to be brilliant. Um, but it was there's a song. I think it's the finale, seeing you, right? Seeing you. Yeah, the last song in the show has this really beautiful, the lyrics are just amazing. It, it's, um, I'm here and I'm fine and I'm seeing you for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that just hit me right there when I heard those lyrics. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, like that just sums up this kind of journey that this character has been on. And he, yeah, after how, you know, however many days he's been living in this kind of, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. he's like had this epiphany and the way that Tim Minchin's written that in this beautiful yeah, really, song that kind of made him a that. lot softer yeah I, I i still i think i cringe a little when bill murray tells rita he loves her mm -hmm. on that final day because she hasn't spent the day with him mm -hmm. like they can't i know like she's swept up in how incredible he is but it feels a little manipulative and then he says i'm happy now um because i love you and i wonder every yeah. time i go she should go wait that's still too yeah. soon but then. he's told her the deal right you know when they're in they're dancing on the dance floor and boss is face is saying let's do the auction mm. they have a moment where they're talking about something she, he tells her what's happened in that moment right if that's true i've never noticed it before that's unbelievable <laughs> are you sure i think so that's <laughs> unbelievable i didn't catch that i've never caught that that he's he's told her she I'm just goes there's something certain. different about you and then he says something he says a line i can't remember what it is like let me tell you like he says something oh wow that. that's crazy and then the you see the, the camera the pans out and you see them having a con like looking eyes having a conversation you don't know what they say but my interpretation was that he was telling her wow that's crazy that, that changed that's crazy. Might, might be Everything. absolute shite yeah that's so different that's, that's so different that's why i took from it today watching it so he's he's doing the 51st dates like sure uh, explanation where he's like I, yeah. I've fallen in love with you over many, many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't remember. Yeah. Wow. That's different, it's man. That's a whole completely other different player. movie. I mean, we might well have to watch it again, and I might be completely wrong, but that's why I took from it today. So. That's so funny. That's so funny. I've never noticed that. Before. I like that. Crazy. That's, yeah, that's I, nuts. Never, never, ever mm -hmm. noticed that. Mind blown. What is it? The student teaching the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. Can you, can you guys? Can you guys hear? I want to. I, can you guys hear the piano? Right now. Yeah. I don't hear anything um, piano wise. Just unplug that and I'll just turn it up a bit. It should pick up in the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's not now feeding through the, the mixer, but it goes. Um, I just wanted to play the melody because it's, it's just a particularly beautiful. So seeing you, yeah. Seeing you, yeah. About the it, line that Anna said, I wanted to give it the context of the melody because I think it's so important. It goes, uh, it goes uh, but I'm here. And I'm fine, and I'm seeing you for the first time. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Aww. Okay, um, so I just had so many thoughts. Nick's one, crying right now. Yeah, <laughs> Nick's always going to cry. Uh, one, yes, you're beautiful, and as usual. Two, thank you so much. I did not expect us to have listeners. You, you all just got a treat. Three. <laughs> Uh, only a true musician would be like, no, 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 no. The, the lyric is not enough. You need to hear the <laughs> melody. melody of yeah. the it is a beautiful melody, yeah. So I, I think like when 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 you know how a song goes and someone says the line to you, automatically play the melody in your head. And I think even how beautiful those lyrics are um, mm -hmm. don't have as much weight as that sweet little, um, just that kind of swaying melody. Yeah, the I first have. time, so... And it was like, you need to know this musical, like, you know, all other musicals. So he sat down on the piano, he had the kind of um, sheet music in front of him. And he was like, we're going to learn this song. Mm. And like, that's kind of what I was going to say is what Tim Minchin, I think, has done is picked up on all those little nuances in the film mm. and kind of put them at the forefront. Yeah. So when we were learning um, that bit of seeing you, I just choked. I couldn't get my voice out could I? I was like oh this is too much it's yeah yeah beautiful. one of those like, yeah one of those songs yeah. that just break it yeah yeah, yeah. I, did, I did make a note that so like I do think it's more timeless but it seems like maybe they're showing you every day and like you there is no extra time that you don't see there's there's never 
too many explicit places in this movie where they say it is the case as compared to say something like Palm Springs, where I feel like Palm Springs, mm -hmm. that movie, there are specific times, like whole conversations where it's like, you don't understand. I've been here for thousands of years. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I have lived so many lives. Um, but I think the implication, as you all are pointing out, and I didn't even know that clearly the, the musical must, you know, is kind of confirming this, like, he did the same thing. And that's well, like the growth that needed to happen for him yeah. to be able to get to the point where he is for all the times that he's spent for all the days that he's spent with her. Uh, like it is the first time that he's, he's truly, he had to become a completely different person. To yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, 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 am, um, I think, I think I'm one of the people that thinks he spent a lot longer than people assume. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're talking about hundreds of years. Whereas I think most people subscribe to about 30 to 40 years. I'm going to say I'm in that. Yeah. But basically, I mean, you're talking about um, someone going from not learning piano to learning piano, but as an adult, when you're a kid, you can, even mm -hmm. if you put in those out, but he has to, he has to wait and rob the bank at exactly the right time every day and then get to a piano lesson. So he hasn't got all day and then he can only have the piano lesson for as long as he can have it. And he has to do that and become a perfect ice sculptor. Um, and all those things and he does make reference to the fact that they're throwing cards into the hat right uh -huh. and That's she says like she says i could never get good at this and he says no you could like six months yeah. three to four hours a day <laughs> and so he's taught he that's a time of passage that he spent doing it yep he's telling you there and then when they go to see um good bad and ugly he's dressed up as clint eastwood and he says uh, i've seen this movie a hundred times mm. that's a hundred days mm. And he just gives you those little throwaway things like how long he spent in there and he says hi nancy <laughs> as he walks by <laughs> but yeah um yeah and i think it's interesting again i just love the musical so much but, but that, that's the, going back to what we're talking about in terms of our relationship that's what i find so brilliant about watching films with andy is that i would watch that film previously and be like oh yeah cool like he spent you know a year or whatever in that kind of nightmare and then it ended i wouldn't have thought about it Mm. But then you get this kind of essay at the end of the. Movie. Um, <laughs> but even even the even the the passage the uh, in the musical it's the one day passage where he's she's le he's learning um, exactly what Rita likes yeah. and it's the uh, sweet the move on the rocks with a twist. Um, you expect her to go oh actually this drink reminds me of this but no that one he's got she says I agree so that means you've skipped him learning that series of yep i kind of felt so that too. yeah so there are like days and days and days and days of skipping stuff um in order to get to these and you can see they show you the two scenes of the snowball one where he nails it and the other one where he's yes. so over the top <laughs> because he's fed up of it now that is i've done this day so many times yeah. and i haven't got my I uh, yeah i'm set with it or whatever mm -hmm. um in the musical exactly exactly that he says um she goes, Phil, you bought me candies. And he goes, I bought you candies. Can I get in your panties? And slap. <laughs> and, like, um, and he says, I'm not, a, he sings like, I'm not a fictional man. I'm just me. Mm -hmm. He can't be everything she wants him to be. He can't. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And you see him drive himself to insanity. You see him drive to suicide, trying to be everything on her tip list. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't because work. He's only got a day. Yeah, yeah because he's only got a day. That goes to, what the the core is and how it ties back into relationships and i think that it's the the realization that you can't try to be everything on everyone's tick list exactly. so at different points in my life and in my relationships i can remember literally using that as a analogy where it would be like you're creating out of every relationship that you have we talked about baggage earlier uh you know and, and unpacking it the idea that you're creating sort of a, a checklist of the things that you're looking for in a relationship. And I have discovered that that's not really like in my most recent sort of serious relationship before Danielle, there was someone who did check like almost every box, you know, they were, they were driven, they were interested in video games. They liked watching movies with me. A lot of things Danielle uh, doesn't have in common. They had large boobs. That group, this individual <laughs> did have very nice, large, like each one about the size of my head. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> the point being, like, but there was just no spark there. Like, it wasn't working. You know what I mean? Like, so, but on paper, this person ticked every box. And right, right. I think that's the. It's only when Phil stops trying to be everything for her and just kind of tries to improve himself for his self improvement's sake that then he becomes 
something more, something uh, higher, and he's more sort of self-actualized, and that's actually the thing that's more uh, attractive and more serious of their relationship is him just be kind of eventually becoming comfortable and confident in the person that he is. Yeah, no, completely agree. And actually, he he ends the movie on on the final perfect day. He shows a little bit of ego because that's who he is. He has a. She tells yeah. him at the start, um, "You have an ego. It's your defining characteristic." And at the end, when he's doing the ice sculpture and he's like joking, you know, you paid top dollar for me, and you know, yeah, whatever. And he's cool. like, he has a he has these like inflections of ego, which she finds charming mm -hmm. because it's all about context. He's yeah. he is allowed to be ego driven. He is allowed to have that. Like he, he is a TV personality, yeah. but he is way more himself than when he's trying to be the perfect guy for sure. So yeah, I completely agree with you. I have a question mm. and this is for anyone in the room. Oh, okay. Like, did he know that? Do you all think that he was supposed to know that what he was doing was going to get him to the next day? Or why did he all of a sudden choose to just be a good person? I don't think so. I think too much time has passed for him to consciously think this is going to get me out mm. of this i think it's just so so many things have happened so much time have passed that he just it's that's just his art that's just where he ends up yeah he says like, it, being a good person is the best thing to be he says I, no matter what happens tomorrow for the rest of my life i'm happy now yeah and i think i genuinely think he had the intention i don't think it's realistic i think he had the intention that that would be the day he does every single day now mm. to end up happy with rita in the evening interesting mm. you know the one thing i thought about today actually because we live in a city and we walked but i walked past an alley and it smelled really bad because it's chicago and mm. i thought about the scene with the homeless person the homeless person mm -hmm. and like um this movie's really smart in that like that wasn't a main plot point but it was also just very interesting to keep it real in the movie of like this guy's meant to die today no matter what he tried a million different ways yeah. and he still died they leave it ambiguous like did phil manage to save this guy did he because you'd think as part of that guy uh, part of his day catching the kid out of the tree jacking the tire the stake down the throat you think part of that day would be getting this guy in a cafeteria and giving him some soup but they completely leave it up to you to decide um the, the, the musical is defining it, it has him die yeah well i mean I think what you were going to say was it, you see his sort of dying breath. And oh, then and then Phil looks up to Phil God. Phil looks up to God. And the I, God. Yeah, and, and I the... took, like, looks up to the heavens, whatever, and I took that as, like, okay. Accepting. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, and I think that's part of his journey, too, is, like, he's going to, it's all about, you know, self-actualization, obviously, and it, it's that realization that he's going to do all the things that he can do. Like he, if he catches that kid, that kid probably, you know, doesn't get maimed for the rest of his life or die. Mm -hmm. You know, if he is able to, you know, unjack that woman's car or he's able to, you know, uh, give the Heimlich to the, the punk Satani leader guy, all of those things are like going to change the, the outcome. They're going to change the result of like that person either dies, hurts, whatever gets to where mm -hmm. they need to get going. Yeah. Yeah. But you can assume that he spent, potentially years worth of days if not at least months of trying to do whatever he could yeah. to keep that old man from dying and then yeah. that's, that that's what like it's just out of my hands you can only yeah. affect the things that you have control over and you have to yeah. give up on and accept the things that you can't 100 percent, and that's why i think it's so um powerful when he uses um terms of endearment regarding father i think it's really interesting to think how long has he spent with this guy that he's mm. developed that with him let's talk about the fact that he spent 50 years doing this right what are the things that he doesn't have to do because i know what triggered it it's because in the film she says don't you worry about cholesterol lung cancer etc mm -hmm. and he says i don't worry about anything in the in the play she, he's running to meet someone and he's out of breath and he's like i just can't seem to build up my stamina and rita says well they say if you do a little bit every day and he goes yeah you'd think <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it's a really funny moment in the play. But um, so he has all these things that he could, yeah, his physiological being stays the same, right? So I have a feeling that, you know, they, they actually reach the next day, they reach February 3rd, and they're going to move to Punxsutawney or whatever. Now, I think about six months from then, Rita says, why aren't you cutting your fingernails? And he goes, oh, crap, I haven't cut my fingernails in 50 years. I completely forgot. <laughs> Because he wouldn't have cut his fingernails. He, he doesn't have to. 
There'd be so many things like that, yeah. Yeah, there's all these little things. Like, he hasn't had a shower in that long, a hot shower. Mm. He hasn't, yeah, he, he won't have had to do anything. His hair won't have grown. Like, there'll be all these little things that he'll have forgotten that have, you know, these are part of human yeah, that habits happen. that he's completely forgotten. And yet, yeah, he won't have built up stamina. He won't have, none of it, none of it matters. I thought about what would happen if he was a female. <laughs> first period <laughs> first time you've had a period no, in 50 years yeah or what if you had a period that whole time oh, oh my god, I don't wanna... god, oh god yeah <laughs> <laughs> that groundhog day for you falls just in the worst throes <laughs> of your yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cramps every day do, do that's you, a whole um, new circle of hell right there <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly well alright is there anything else that you had Danny uh, I, I've got one. I've got one more thing. Yes. And I, I don't think it's a thing that people know um, necessarily. And I think it's so it passes by so quickly. Tell us. When Rita's falling asleep, when she says, "Maybe I should just like spend the night at yours just to see what happens." Um, the classic for science thing. Um, <laughs> she, the the scene picks up, and he says. Um, and she says, oh, sorry, I fell asleep. And he says, that's okay. I think you got up to the line, but only God can make a tree. And um, if you guys don't know this, um, I, I did write it down to make sure I got it exactly right. But this is a poem by Joyce Kilmer, and it's called Trees. And I think it's really, really important to what happens next for Phil, because he spends this day with Rita after t telling her everything and he does that kind of, you know, Bruce Almighty thing of predicting when everything's going to happen. And she says, right, what's going on? How do you know all this stuff? And then decides to spend the day with him. And it's after that that he wakes up the next day. Rita's gone and he puffs his chest out. And now he's going to be selfless and try and be better. And it, and I think this poem that he's reading, Rita, is so prevalent. And the poem is that let, ends in the line, he says, he says, uh, the poem goes, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And considering the guy spends the entire movie referring to himself as a God, um, for him to acknowledge that um, I'm a fool and only God can make something as beautiful as a tree, he's distancing himself from an omnipotence mm. and therefore just be a better guy. And I think it's so important that he's reading that poem as him and Rita depart at 5.59 in the morning, and then the next day he's changed. I think it's as important as the time spent with Rita, actually. So the one thing I was going to add is his last line is, well, I don't know if it's his, his last, last line, but when he wakes up the next day, he goes, is there anything I can do for you today? Right? That's yes. what he says. And That's what he says, yeah. There was, like, Nick and I have been together for seven years now, and, like, you know, we've tried some relationship tricks yep. uh, to like keep each other positive or just like how can we be better spouses to one another by and the way was... fun a little tip for everyone uh work on that while things are going well in your relationship so that you know it's not in the time of panic that you now are like don't have the equipment uh to to struggle mm -hmm. through things together work on those lines of communication while things are going good sorry anyway continue <laughs> so there was a time and i remember that we would be like what can i do for you today mm -hmm. and we stopped saying that i don't know why but like that was just our way of saying like how can I serve you and ha how can I be there for you? And then this movie reminded me of it. I didn't know if it was from the movie, if you got it from the movie, or I if think we got we it from had, like a book. Or I something. think we had gotten that. That one was specifically from the five love languages, I want to oh, say. Oh, yeah. And it was like, mm -hmm. what is your love tank and, and how can I fill it right now in yeah. this moment? But I just thought that that showed true love, that it was like, what can I do for you today rather than yeah. what can I do for me? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it proves that he, when he broke the curse, he was willing to stay selfless. He wasn't like, yay, I'm free, I did it. And mm. he goes back to how he was. This might tie everything up quite well, but the um, I don't know how on purpose this kind of analogy was. I said it to Anna earlier, and she, I think you appreciated it as a point of view. But um, if, if Phil being so egocentric and, and kind of um, considering himself more than anybody else is kind of like only seeing his shadow. Um, he only sees like his shadow on the ground. He doesn't see anybody else. Then in order for him to move past winter, he had to stop seeing his shadow, which is obviously 
Groundhog Day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That well, is. Yep, is. that's how the it works. That too yeah. deep. You're too deep. <laughs> And, and on that, because I don't think we're going to find a better way to end the, the broad conversation, sincerely. Um, I think I probably know the answer for at least most of these, but we like to end with a X out of five heart rating, which is sort of your trying to be objective in terms of how good or bad you think the movie is. Okay, and cool. then a would you renew your vows, which is a sort of how well does it hold up for you? And would you be interested in watching this movie again at some point in the future? And because I think that um, we'll let us book and you all, because I think I know what, what your answer is going to be. Danny, why don't you start us off this time? Okay. I like how you said that the heart rating's objective when I only give movies like one or 10,000 hearts. So it's not. <laughs> so how many hearts then does uh, Groundhog Day get? Uh, 4.5 out of 5 hearts. <laughs> She's slowly getting more like standard in terms of what she actually is. <laughs> and would you renew your vows? Uh, I don't know. This movie was, it's, it's one of those emotional things. I would watch it. Yes, I would renew my vows. But I wouldn't do it every February 2nd. Let me tell you that. <laughs> it's something that I'll wait a couple of years. Or maybe even watch it with our kids one day. All right, all right. Because it does hold up. It's an old movie. I'm I'm not dating myself. I was born in 92, so I was only one when this movie came out. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's still, I mean, I'm going to be 30, and it's still a good movie. Sorry, no mm. offense to anyone that's 30 around here. Or more than that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, Andy, uh, what would you all rate it, and or uh, would you renew your vows? I can, I can find out on Letterbox exactly what I did rate it, but yeah, oh, you, there you, go. you can probably find out what I rate it. That will be interesting because I have a definite rating in my head, and I reckon it's different to what I said. Oh, mine's... All right, so while we're waiting for, so my, mine's five anyway. Mine's five. Five out of five. Well, that's <laughs> it's five out of five hearts, but like that's from from your you own know, heart. There's a lot of nostalgia. There's a lot of like. Sure, sure. It's one of my favorite movies. I know objectively that wouldn't be my score, but I'm not a movie critic. I'm an accountant, so I'm going to go with five. There you go. <laughs> Interestingly, first time we watched it, so two years ago, I gave it four stars on Letterboxd. Out of five, think... ten on Letterboxd? No, it's out of right? five. Oh, okay. Out of five. In my head, I thought it was... um, but I think it's a five for me now. Ooh. But I think that's like a Is the synergy extra star of the musical. the musical. And yeah, I think... Objectively, I think it's probably not a five star movie, but all the sentiment and everything, yeah, fine. Mm. And yes, I would renew my vows definitely. Mm -hmm. And will be, I'm sure, every year on February 2nd. Now you have to. Now your calendar will be set. I I will go ahead and so. Uh I don't think you 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 guys are far off with the five out of five. And I I love that discussion because I think that as much as we claim that we, you know, things are different part of what we love about this podcast is everybody brings their baggage or their their memories of it their nostalgia to it and we've watched some movies uh like the mask for example that our guests clearly just still were enamored with but when we rewatched it for the first time in years it was like eh. i groundhog day mm. i was very impressed the other day when we were watching it because as you all have already intimated it it really does hold up and even the things that are sort of like I wrote down a note of like, oh God, I forgot how much he like straight up sexually harasses his producer. Like he's, it's not even like I'm saying something that's, you know, insensitive in a 2021 context. Like in 1993, this would have been something that should have and would have gotten him fired. He also says, I love you now have sex with me basically, but that's, a, we didn't get to that. But <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I actually think it holds up uh, fairly well. And I, I was going to give it a, a 4.75. Oh. out of five i think there are a couple of things that you know maybe i would tweak a little or do things a little differently but mm. uh i would renew my vows even more so after our conversation than i would have already like i, I would mm. i was probably like yeah probably i'll watch it at some point in the future i am like i'm now wishing we had bought instead of rented on amazon because <laughs> i, I want to go back and watch it after this conversation right now that's i want to watch that scene to see if i'm right yeah me too that is a good point yeah yeah. That is a really good if point. If I'm right, I'm I'm gonna dine out on that forever. <laughs> no, hundred percent. No, you no, fair play. No, genuinely, that for you know to point something out that is so fundamental about the movie, and I haven't I've seen it so many times and never noticed that. Well, and um, this is why I enjoy this podcast because I don't enjoy movies as much as Nick or you all do, but 
hearing you guys talk about it made me enjoy it even more. So mm. thank you for bringing all of the knowledge and all of that to my brain. I'm still probably not going to watch it all the time. But. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, you'll have to let us know what you find. And Andy, you'll have to reach out on social media when you go watch Palm Springs again. Uh, but thank yeah, you absolutely, yeah. very much, so very much for sticking with us. We know it's late at night for you all. We really appreciate you hanging in there. And uh, I love you, Danny. I love you, Nick. We love, we love you, you. Mary Weathers. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you, movie lovers. Thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Follow us on Twitter at the letter N, love with movies. On Facebook at facebook.com slash with movies and love. And on Instagram and TikTok at in love underscore with movies. You can email us at with movies in love. That's all one word with movies in love at gmail.com to share your own love stories with us. Suggest future love topics that you might want to hear us discuss or just to say, hey, we'd like to hear from you. Hey, all original music written and performed by Danny Smith with our theme song remixed by Paul Brandt. And this whole podcast was produced and edited by my lovely husband, Nicholas Baldwin. Special thank you to Ben A. Bear for Danny's Dingle and Nick Stretchberry for our website and podcast art. Absolutely, yeah. I've got, I've been convinced to, to join in. So, yeah, I'm brand new to this. How are you feeling about that? I've just kind of not thought about it. I'll just go with it. See what happens. Be fine. <laughs> See what happens, yeah. That's yeah. married life, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes you have just to agree and get on with it. Yeah, you yeah. definitely don't want to do. <laughs>